In relation to you telling your story, it's so great, can I say, that you're telling your story. I have a vivid recollection of finding out I had multiple myeloma 12 months ago and I went online and there was nothing positive about anyone coping and living with myeloma, certainly living with myeloma as happily as you live with myeloma. So I think to have your story online and to share your stories so important for people like me. Well, when I was first diagnosed at that time, the prognosis for someone in their mid-50s was five years. So I naturally started packing up the house and getting ready for uh, that short span of life. And I said to my children, how about we start traveling and doing some trips? And my neighbor was keen to travel as well. So I started planning a few places I really wanted to go to in those last five years. And then one day when I was going yet again to my secretary saying, can we just move all those patients from September to another month? She just came back with, uh, I hope you don't mind me saying this, Dr. Miller, but this myeloma has given you a lot. <laughs> As in, <laughs> I've been doing a lot of things that uh, a lot of people might do normally who had a life ahead of them that I hadn't done previously. Not many people know what multiple myeloma is. And it's a little bit confusing because it sounds like other forms of cancer. Can you explain in layperson's terms what it is? There are cells in the bone marrow called plasma cells which become cancerous and then they get into spread throughout the body and they can eat away at the bones and cause what we call pathological fractures. So fractures where there's no force on a bone but it breaks because the bone's weakened from these lesions. Um, so it's a cancer within the bone marrow. It's not a blood cancer like leukaemia, it's within the bone marrow itself. You've had multiple myeloma for 13 years. Has having this cancer brought any real surprises to your life? Well, yes, it's changed the direction quite significantly. As I said, I was working quite hard. Now I've had to cut back and recognising that I had a disease that was causing my fatigue uh, has allowed me to sit back and take life a bit easier rather than pushing on through the tiredness. And how were you diagnosed with multiple myeloma? Oh, well, I've been fortunate because the child's finding in a sense of um, blood tests, low neutrophils and liver function tests that were disturbed meant I was diagnosed before I had any bony lesions, so I haven't had any fractures. Um, and so rather than heading towards a bone marrow transplant, my hematologist said, well, let's just wait and see because all my results plateaued off. So I was what's called a smouldering myeloma, which is myeloma, but not severe enough to warrant, you know, the rather daunting bone marrow transplants or medications that you take. So then in 2016, my paraprotein was going up and I was anemic and uh, my dentist found two small lesions in my jaw. And so we decided to go ahead with a bone marrow transplant. It was and still is the gold standard treatment for, for initial diagnosis myeloma. Though there are more and more studies looking at using medication as a first line, particularly in those who can't or are too old or unhealthy enough for a bone marrow transplant. You had another bone marrow transplant not long after your first one. They now do a, what's called a piggyback transplant so I only had a partial response to the first bone marrow transplant but you know a reasonable response but you've had one haven't you? Oh I know. The second one brought my paraprotein down to zero and it stayed on zero ever since. I've been on medication since then um, so it was worth doing. And how has it affected you? What are some of the challenges that the illness has brought to your life? The hardest thing is the fatigue because I used to run half marathons, I was a very busy, fairly active person how would you say your life has changed since having your diagnosis of multiple myeloma? I guess, no, not a lot has changed. I guess the whole mindset is different now with, with a life-threatening illness. There are times that I think, oh, when's it's going to rear its ugly head again because it will come back as a relapse at some stage. Um, but I don't live my life waiting for that now. So what do you do that brings joy to your life now? I've always enjoyed gardening, so I just adore being in the garden and it's a bit like a sanctuary here. I just have this enclosed space and 
there's always things happening in the garden. You know, the hydrangeas are out now, the roses have had their first blush. That's something that's really joyful for me. Music, I grew up in a family of music. Uh, I started learn, learning piano when I was five, so piano playing is still a, a comfort and joy for me. I go to a cancer fit gym in Sydney and I find being with the other people in the gym that actually have cancer as well, it's quite empowering. After the bone marrow transplants, I didn't realise how weak I was. I'd lost all my strength. I just presumed it was old age or something. I don't know. I just, but my daughters pointed out to me I should go to a strength and conditioning coach. And I went, okay, if I have to. So I started that and started getting my strength back. And then I found this other place which um, is a centre for people with cancer. So it's really keeping exercise going. And whereas the gym's good because it's, but it's with younger people who are fit and healthy and strong. Whereas the other place is other people like me who aren't that strong. So I feel not so much like a fish out of water there. And you set up a support group for people with multiple myeloma in Newcastle a while ago. Can you tell me about this group? No, I'm very proud of that group. It's been running for 10 years and a great bunch of people. We get a lot of uh, encouragement from each other and we laugh a lot. Mm -hmm. Have you got any advice that you'd like to give to a friend of someone or a family member of someone who has multiple myeloma? Keeping an open mind would be the first one because it's called multiple myeloma because it presents in so many different ways with different people. So being aware there's not just one standard treatment for the condition, so everyone is different. Fortunately, I've gone from I'm going to die to I'm going to live because myeloma no longer is a terminal illness. It's a chronic illness now. So, And my daughters, uh, one daughter particularly said, Dad, could I speak to someone about myeloma? Because you've told us a bit, but I'd like to learn more but from a decent source. So I suggested she rang the Myeloma Australia helpline, which is manned by myeloma nurses, and she said they were just fantastic. They explained it all in a very objective, straightforward manner, and she really felt she got her head around it. So that was helpful for her. Um, so there are resources, I and mean, Myeloma Australia is a great resource for someone with myeloma. I guess with the improved treatments now, we are surviving longer, which is very heartening. So when you were diagnosed 13 years ago, you were actually given five years to live. Yes. And it's 13 years down the track. I mean, the diagnosis really help, has helped me confront the fact that I'm mortal and really, that my life will come to an end. Um, and so I'm just living each day, each month, each year as it happens. And so whatever comes will come. So whether, it's thir whether I live another 13 years or another five or another two, doesn't bother me. I'm sort of ready for those final stages. <laughs>